Yeah let's, yeah, let's talk some cricket now on the Sports Bank Zone. Round five of the Cricket West Indies Regional four-day competition bowled off earlier on Wednesday with all eight teams in action at four venues across three countries. Let's begin our day one recap at the Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad and Tobago where the TNT Red Force were bonded out for 172 in 53.5 overs after electing to bat against Barbados Pride. Former West Indies captain Jason Holder, second game of the season he was the pick of the pride bowlers grabbing figures of 4 for 47 as left-hander Amir Jango provided the lone resistance for the Red Force with a patient and unbeaten knock of 93 just seven short of his century Barbados then got to stumps at 99 for 4 73 runs behind Zachary McCaskey remember he went to Australia with the West Indies test squad he so far top scored with 46 Staying in Trinidad and Tobago, where the West Indies Academy constructed an impressive first innings after being inserted by combined campuses and colleges at the Sir Frank Warren Memorial Ground, the Academy boys were eventually dismissed for 300 in 78.3 overs thanks to an unbeaten 76 from Carlton Bowen Tucket. We saw him at Sabina Park last week with a patient knock to keep them in the game. And that, of course, was against Yannick Otley, who claimed... Um, 5 for 47. CCC then got the stumps at 11 for 1 with Damiel e Evelyn 10 and Zeshan Matara 1 at the crease. Over in Antigua, the Guyana Harpy Eagles ran it from 77 for 3 to pile on 308 in 80.5 overs after electing to bat against Windward Islands Volcanoes at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. Kevin Sinclair led the Harpy Eagles mid-order resistance with a top score of 74. He's been very good, Kevin Sinclair, while Daryl Cyrus was the pick of the Windward's bowlers with 5 for 67. The Windward's got the close of play at 12 without loss, trailing the Harpy Eagles by 296 runs and only 51.4 overs were possible on day one at Sabina Park right here in Jamaica as the Scorpions who were inserted by the Leeward Islands Hurricanes recovered from 59 for 5 to batter to 173 for 6 before rain brought an abrupt end to the day's play opener Carlos Brown finally getting a half century this campaign his very first Although he's been really consistent at the top of the order, he's unbeaten on 68. Jeremiah Louis, as he's done for the entire season, getting that ball to move around, he's taken 3 for 34 for the Hurricanes. So, Mariah, that is it from day number one of round five in the regional four-day championship. Some good performances, um, but... Well, I don't want to say but because you had a couple of scores over 300, but yeah. the ball is very much involved in this opening day. Yeah, very, very involved. And you can see that by the total of the Red Force. Of course, 172 all out. Ricardo, that was one of the matches that I started my morning with. So looking at the match, of course, their opener, Vikash Mohan, was dismissed um, for the first ball. So mm -hmm. they started instantly, they started that match on the back foot. They went on losing wickets, losing wickets. Uh, luckily for Amir Jango, and we have to remember that Amir Jango came into the squad because Jed Gooley picked, picked up that injury. Amir is somebody I know as a kid, like I would literally, um, growing up I used to score because my uncle had a team for you cricket. Used to, you used to score for yeah, cricket? Yeah, so I used to score for Musai Sports Club, right? Yes. And um, because of that, I got the opportunity at a very young age to, of course, interact with a lot of these players. Amir was one of the players that really caught my attention as a little boy. One, because of his stance, and two... When he was a little boy? Yeah, he, okay. he's a lot younger than I am. <laughs> Amir is a lot, a lot younger than I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just clarifying something. It's yeah, fine. <laughs> yeah, and of course, you know, he... The fact that he has always been so focused, Ricardo, on, you know, making it big and, you know, making his parents proud, recently had him on in case you missed it and, you know, I asked him about the challenges that he has faced into making it into the West Indies setup. And one of the things he said to me in that interview was that, you know, whenever he gets the opportunity, he really hopes that he can capitalize on it. And I think today, um, Amir, this 93 is 
um, setting you up in the right direction, this 93 not out, when all his teammates were, of course, collapsing for very little scores. So I am personally very, very proud of that score, and I hope he can continue, you know, along that path. And the truth is, as a player, all you can do, Mariah, is do the best you can. Put the scores on the board, take the wickets, and leave the rest up to the selectors. Yes, yes, yes. And the truth is, in West Indies cricket at this time, you feel as if there are always opportunities to get into the West Indies side. And yeah. so it's important that you just get the runs on the board. I was happy to see Jason Holder getting wickets today as mm -hmm. well, taking four. Oh. Um, we all know the quality of Jason Holder as an all-rounder cricketer in all formats of the game but remember he decided not to go to the test tour of australia because he wants to focus on t20 cricket maybe it was just me but when he said that i also thought to myself that maybe he wouldn't play regional. the regional four-day season either as part of that focus on the limited overs version or the shortest format of the game this season and so I was pleased to see him playing last weekend and even more pleased to see him taking four wickets today and really leading for Barbados as they skitted out Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. Yes, yeah, so of course, um, you know, Trinidad and Tobago Red Force on the back foot. Another one of the matches that I found exciting and one of the players that, again, I had the opportunity to interact with, Yannick Otley, mm. um, in that match, Windy's Academy versus CCC, leading the CCC bowlers with 5 for 47. And, you know, in in um, domestic cricket in Trinidad and Tobago, Otley was always a name that, you know, we would look out for in the scorecard, Ricardo, because he would always be dominant with bat and ball. So today to see him again being among one of the leading wicket takers, really, really happy for him. CCC now trail by 289 runs. So they will have a lot of work to do, seeing that um, they have already lost a wicket. They're batting 11 for one. So they'll need to refocus and come tomorrow, really try to get that score. Yeah, and of course, his brother, Kieran Otley, yes. in the West Indies setup, um, at 32 years old, I don't know. Remember that um, controversial discussion yeah. with the Bravo and... <laughs> Let, let's not get back to that controversial discussion, shall we? <laughs> um, but yes, um, quite a good performance. Um, Sabina Park, the yeah. Jamaica Scorpions, struggling with the bat in their first innings again, 6 for 173 is what I think they ended at. Carlos Brown, who is a young man who has batted pretty well all season for the Scorpions, he continues to get starts, Mariah, without pushing on. Um, his highest score before this match was 48, Ooh. and he had gotten a number of 30s as well. So um, he gives himself a chance. That's the thing I like about him. Every time Carlos Brown goes to the crease, he gives himself a chance um, to bat a lot of deliveries and to make some runs. And it's good to see that finally it's come together for him today. He is not out on 66th. I think it is. 68. Um, 68. So he is 32 runs away from a century. And I really hope that he can get that century on tomorrow's second day, weather permitting, of course, because it's been raining cats and dogs in Jamaica um, since early afternoon, yeah. um, one would say. But again, Jeremiah Louie, very, very good for the Three. Leeward Islands. I, because of the discussion we had with Nikhil on Monday, I decided that I wanted to take a close look at Jeremiah Louis here. And I have not seen any fast bowler in this season um, that has come to Kingston or that has come to Jamaica to play in this tournament. And we know that a lot of matches have been played in Jamaica so far, whether at Chedwin Park, Kensington Park or Sabina Park. And I have not seen anybody move the ball in the way that I saw Jeremiah Louis um, do it today. Um, and I don't think we see that enough in regional cricket for more regional bowlers. He's not the fastest in the world, but he's doing a lot with the cricket ball. And uh, I can understand why he has taken as many wickets as he has so far in this tournament. Yeah, yeah, really happy for him. And, you know, one of the things, when I watch regional cricket, I see so much class and mm. so much talent from these players. And it always confuses me as to why when they get the opportunity into the windy setup, they're not able to convert what we see from, you know, regional cricket into that level. You know why, Mariah? Just look at this first-class season. Um, Tell me the one name that every single round, every single innings, um, at least from a batting standpoint, that's the name you hear every time. 
I can probably find a bowler, but you're asking for too much when you say it, about the bat. It's always a different batsman. Yeah. yeah Every yeah. round, it's always a different batsman. And that's the issue. Consistency. Um, to be the best at the highest level, you have to be able to do it match in, match out, innings in, innings out. And that's what we're not seeing. We're seeing players doing well and different players doing well in different matches. But we're not seeing that one or two persons who are Just able keeps. to do it mm -hmm. every single time. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a note where we will be wrapping this segment. But we have interactive and a lot of fun stuff coming up in interactive. So stay with us.